Rosemary is working for me. The goal of this video is to tell my story and to see if it's something that could possibly work for you. Now, I know there's been a lot of videos posted lately. These videos are discrediting the ability of Rosemary to be beneficial to hair or to regrow hair. They say there's very little scientific evidence to support Rosemary. And to be honest, that's true. There is very little scientific evidence available that supports Rosemary. There are three studies. One of the studies compares Rosemary oil to 2% monoxidil. It was done in 2015. And this is a study that based on its methods and based on the products that you use, you can't say with absolute certainty that rosemary is just as effective as minoxidil. Like right? that is false. That is a myth. The study is 2% minoxidil and apparently they didn't use a control group. It's a very wishy-washy scientific study. The next one was done in 2013. The 2013 study suggested that rosemary was a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, meaning that it will block the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. And then the last study was actually done more recently in 2023. It used a rosemary extract, extracted with methanol, and it turned it into a lotion and found that rosemary was effective at reducing hair fall. Now, these three studies are not the holy grail of evidence for rosemary and androgenetic alopecia. But the reason I support it is because of my own personal usage. And you can also go on the internet and just Google and find tons of testimonials about how rosemary has helped some others they didn't really see a difference they don't believe in the power and honestly that's how all these treatments work for some people for nasteride works others it don't others it works but it gives terrible side effects the same thing with nutasteride the same thing with minoxidil um the, the reason that i stopped using minoxidil wasn't really because i didn't see a difference i did see a little tiny bit of growth and maybe if i had kept using it it would have been a lot more effective at restoring my crown and my uh hairline but I was more afraid of the impact that it would have on my pet. I have multiple dogs in multiple homes. These dogs love to interact with me, cuddle with me, rub up on me, lick me. And it was just too much of a concern for their health and safety to be using minoxidil around it. So if you have pets, be very careful. Minoxidil is extremely toxic to animals. Even the smallest amounts can cause serious medical concerns. Now, when I first started losing my hair, Rosemary and peppermint oil were two of the first things that I turned to. Peppermint was long ago recommended to me by a stylist, and rosemary was something that I read about. Of course, I was the ones who read about the study. Oh, you know, rosemary oil is just as effective as minoxidil. I didn't really read in between the lines, but I tried rosemary oil. I didn't try rosemary too long in the beginning, and I used it with a whole bunch of other items. I think I was using eutasteride, minoxidil, nizarol, rosemary, and peppermint oil and eucalyptus oil and I was doing scalp massages and aversion therapy. None of this stuff worked. None of it worked. It wasn't until I started derma rolling, as you can see in my other videos, that things made a difference. But I wanted to see, you know, how well does rosemary really work on its own? If I use it consistently for three months, what change would I see? Would I lose hair? Would I grow hair? Or would it stay the same? Like those are what I really wanted to know outside of all the derma rolling, outside of the other oils, the coffee, all the stuff that I was using. I needed to just see rosemary alone by itself. So for three months, I used rosemary specifically by itself. And basically my hair stayed the same. I didn't need to derma roll. I didn't need to do any of the extras. I do scalp massages as well. I still do my scalp massages. And of course, I do not use rosemary oil by itself. It is something that needs to be used in a carrier oil. My favorite carrier oil is pumpkin seed oil. I have an entirely new oil blend that I've been using, and I will post a video about that eventually. I apply this oil mixture probably about three times a week. I don't use a lot of oil on my hair like I used to. It's only when my hair starts to get any type of length to it that I might use oil more and more on a regular basis. And for those of you who wanted to look at my hair, like this... This is my hair today. As you can see, like it's still a little thin right here. This area has always been thin right there. I'm still slowly, slowly regrowing this temple right here. And this temple has just come back strong. Like there's less than half an inch between this temple and my eyebrow. This one is, yeah, it's still got some ways to go. Like I wish it would just go ahead and kind of just push forward this way and, and kind of merge. Even my hairline, you know, kind of goes like this and then it arches up this way. So I'm still trying to recover small bits of my hairline along here. So after using rosemary oil consistently for three months, about three times a week, sometimes four, 
These are the results. These personal results of rosemary oil showing its ability to maintain my hair over three months without me using any type of other hair growth aids including derma rolling is a positive sign to me and it's one of the reasons i continue to use rosemary oil because at the very least it prevents excess shedding of my hair now whether you want to give rosemary a try is completely up to you whether you do or don't i understand just know that rosemary oil is generally safe but nothing is 100 percent pregnant and breastfeeding women should avoid using rosemary oil due to the lack of studies dealing with those situations. Those with epilepsy, high blood pressure, photosensitivities, and specific allergies should handle rosemary with care. When initially using rosemary, make sure you do a patch test. When putting rosemary oil into any type of carrier oil, it is best to only use a couple of drops. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you guys a couple of recipes directly out of my own recipe book that I use for our essential oils so you guys can see if you like them. If not, you can experiment, play around, make modifications. At the very least, you can do a Google search and find your own recipes if you're taking any type of medications always consult your doctor first before using anything rosemary included and honestly before you even go down your hair growth journey i hope you're seeing a professional consult your general physician consult a dermatologist consult a trichologist these are the professions that can really help you to pinpoint your hair loss to see if you even need something like rosemary or if you need something stronger or if maybe your hair loss is due to something nutritional maybe it's just completely genetic and there's nothing you can do. And if there is nothing that you can do, I would say don't stress out about it. It's not the end of the world. Being bald is not the end of the world. But if you do decide to use rosemary oil, consistency is key. I use it for three months, three to four times a week, and I didn't see any excess shedding, which is a positive sign for me. Now, could it have grown hair? I don't know. I didn't experience any hair growth in the past with it, but like I said, I use an inferior rosemary oil brand. So make sure when you pick your rosemary oil to, to pick a really high quality brand, look for organic. And that being said, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it can assist you in your hair growth journey. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.